What would you say to women who, for a variety of reasons, some good excuses, some not good excuses, what would you say to those women about taking a step and being involved and participate in women's ministry? I would say uh, you can surprise yourself a lot. So I spent my entire life considering myself an introvert and terrified of meeting new people and putting myself out there. So what I've come to find the last eight years is I'm really not an introvert anymore. <laughs> um, and you know, those first few times, it was like the, the heart pumping, the terrified feeling walking in somewhere by myself. And you put yourself out there, you push yourself and the benefits and the fruit that grows are just, it's really a beautiful evolution. And I just think that it's easy to make excuses, especially when you're a mom or when you're a grandma or when you have other things going on, you have busy work schedules. Um, but this is the kind of stuff, this is the kind of priority that matters. Um, so I just would highly encourage anyone on the fence, try something once. If you don't like that event, try one of five other things. You know, there's literally something for everyone. The world doesn't foster a lot of healthy female relationships. So if you're, if, if a new person or someone who's looking into the, the women's ministry here at Old North, if that's what their history is, unhealthy relationships, just know that that's not what you're gonna find here. It's not super clicky. It's not, the, we're not the kind of people who are excluders, we're includers. If you don't like it, you don't have to go again. But I mean, when you walk into a room and everybody at Old North is just so welcoming, so. Same thing, you might surprise yourself. I was terrified when I went to that Christmas brunch because I didn't know anyone and I knew it was gonna be groups of family members and people who go as an annual tradition. And I almost didn't go because I felt my heart say, like I was scared. And I just decided, what do I have to lose? If I, I don't know anyone now, so if I leave, <laughs> I'll either still not know anyone so it's no worse off than I was or I'll surprise myself. And like I said, I've met some of the most wonderful and welcoming women that I've ever met, really, just stepping out there and just doing it. Well, I feel the same way. The intergenerational thing is really good. I'm usually the oldest person wherever I go, <laughs> and I'm very privileged to be there. Mm, yeah. <laughs> but I have often said the wisdom that comes from the younger women is just amazing. It's so heartening. It gives me a lot of hope about the world. It really oh. does. <laughs> I just, and, and I enjoy it because you get a different perspective, mm -hmm. and it, but with the, the same theme and the same meaning, it's, it's really heartwarming. Mm -hmm. I, I love the, that part of it. Like Nicole had said, um, absolutely, um, there's no pressure here in the groups, and um, you know, we're not going to, I don't want to say, put you under a mic all the time. Yeah. <laughs> You're not going to be on stage next yeah, week if you come um, to the there, It's just th so loving and welcoming, and um, there's so much wisdom yeah. here, and um, just um, I can go on and on. But, and I, th I think, Lisa, to your point, that most of that comes from what I mentioned before, the understanding of the centrality of Scripture and the humility with which everyone on staff approaches that. That we, of course, this building is fantastic, these resources are fantastic, but none of it comes to us by our own um, our own you know, works and it could fall apart tomorrow and God would still be good. So we, we start there and then we work out and plan our events accordingly. Yes.